connection, a word with many meanings. As human beings, we connect to our friends, our family, our community. Instinctively, we nurture these connections to build happy and meaningful lives. In California, several mountain lion populations are separated by a force greater than themselves. Lacking connection and genetic diversity, they face not only isolation, but also extinction. The mountain lions in California can exist in the high desert, the low desert, the edge of the coast mountains, the high mountains, up in the snow. So they're extremely versatile. Uh, and some of that versatility comes from their willingness to go from one prey type to another. As a highly adaptable species, mountain lions can live wherever there are adequate resources. However, in some areas of California, their will to adapt simply isn't enough. Mountain lions need to migrate in order to have genetic diversity. And genetic diversity provides a greater likelihood of resistance to disease. It provides a greater likelihood of overall fitness for survival. Mountain lions will disperse from their mother's territory after one to two years of age, ready to establish their own homes, which can be as large as 90 square miles for females and 300 for males because they require huge amounts of space, they occur at relatively low densities, and they're one of the first species to really be affected by urbanization and urban sprawl, because they require so much space. The biggest threat of the human population growth in California to the mountain lion and other wildlife is loss of habitat and loss of connectivity between habitat patches. In other words, it's really hard to get across our roads and freeways. Occasionally, a large natural structure such as a river or valley will limit gene flow among populations, but not to the extent we are observing in California. The absence of connectivity between certain habitats has led to 10 genetically distinct subpopulations of lions in California. When you look at the genetics of animals throughout the state, as you see which populations are sort of more threatened than others and how populations are clustered according to geographic features and highways. Scientists are now predicting local extinctions of some of these genetically inbred populations within the next 50 years if humans don't do anything to facilitate gene flow. Specifically, these six populations are surrounded by highways and human development, making migration nearly impossible and ultimately leading to inbreeding depression. This is when the genetics of a population become so limited that rare genetic mutations come together in a homozygous state and produce abnormal physical characteristics. When this occurs at the population level, the populations can no longer sustain themselves. The mountain lion populations in and around Los Angeles, San Diego, and Santa Cruz appear to be at the highest risk. In our study area in Southern California, uh, the Santa Ana Mountains population is uh, very squeezed by Interstate 15, really between Interstate 15 and the ocean, and development on the north and the south. Specifically looking at Southern California, the Santa Monica Mountains are isolated from the Santa Ana Mountains, which are isolated from the Peninsular Mountains by freeways. Further east lie the San Bernardino and Eastern Peninsula populations, which are separated by the I-10 freeway, development and the desert. Our main study area is in the Santa Monica Mountains adjacent to LA. It's roughly 300 square miles. 
Um, you can think of it as this island of habitat, bordered on the south by the Pacific Ocean, to the east by LA, to the north by major freeways and development. The west has agricultural fields. So it's this island of habitat, completely surrounded by development and freeways. What the 101 did in development in the area is for the first time cut the Santa Monica Mountains off from the rest of the world. And 10 lanes of freeway is an impenetrable barrier. So what you have is the population of mountain lions south of the 101 can't get out. Most of them die trying. Both of our populations have recorded some of the lowest genetic diversity ever recorded outside that of the Florida panther that went nearly extinct. This habitat fragmentation is all over the state. Interstate 5 is a huge barrier between the Central Coast population and those in the Sierra Nevadas. Our study area is the Santa Cruz Mountains, basically the mountain range that's bounded by San Francisco to the north, the Silicon Valley to the east. And Highway 17 bisects the Santa Cruz Mountains, and Highway 101 sort of forms a ring around it. It may look like these lions are doomed, but there is hope. Several organizations are working towards reconnecting these wild places. One of their key challenges is acquiring the land on either side of the highway. The reserve was established in 1962, and the mission of the reserve is conservation, preservation of biodiversity, and habitat connectivity. And so we, pay, we play an important role as a linkage between the Santa Ana Mountains and the Palomar Mountains. We're not set up to do recreation. We're not a park of any kind. We're set aside as conservation, set aside as habitat connection. Now that we've secured key parcels right at the I-15, we're working with UC Davis, who is doing more direct studies to evaluate what types of crossing structures can be installed along the highway to allow safe passage for mountain lions, deer, and other wildlife. UC Davis is working with engineering faculty and students from Cal Poly Pomona to design crossing structures along I-15. So it's got benefit all the way around and we feel like it's well worth it, especially since those structures can last for many decades. So we're very excited about working with engineers uh, and students at engineering schools uh, to provide them with the exposure and the opportunity to work on these kinds of projects that benefit wildlife and not just cars. Additionally, specially designed fencing along highways helps direct wildlife to safe crossing points and away from the roads. This has already shown positive results. On Route 241, wildlife casualties have dropped by 98%, making the roads safer for both humans and animals. In the Santa Monica Mountains, efforts to reconnect the natural habitat involve multiple partnerships. Working on this campaign now to build a vegetated wildlife bridge over the 101 in the vicinity of Liberty Canyon, which is one of our last remaining spots in the mountains that has natural protected habitat on both ends. Building the largest wildlife crossing in the world and also trying to save this population of mountain lions, it is all about partnerships and collaboration. And you know, what, one of the things I love about this campaign as well and, and the quest to do this is everybody's a partner, including the public. The public support for this is unprecedented. I've never seen anything like it. In the Santa Cruz Mountains, researchers are also looking for ways to link lion populations. There's plans now for two tunnels to go across Highway 17, one sort of on the southern Santa Cruz County side and the other on the Santa Clara side of the mountains. These are two places where our data has shown are important for mountain lions crossing. And now we're working on what is arguably the bigger problem, and that is isolation from the Santa Cruz Mountains to neighboring ranges. If linking local populations is the first step, the next step is connecting lions statewide. Not only are these wildlife crossing structures of these highways going to make it sure that wildlife can safely cross these highways, but it will also ensure that there are less human-wildlife collisions on the highways. 
it really behooves all of us to focus on solving the problem of um, wildlife being killed um, as part of our transportation infrastructure. We really want to live in an environment where all the pieces are in place and they're all doing their job. And so we don't want you know, the connectivity between these populations isn't just about mountain lions. It's about, it's about all the animals that are going to use these underpasses, these overpasses, these ways around a deadly freeway. I think we need to remember that as humans, we're not exempt from changes in our environment. Connection truly is a word with many meanings. And to humans and mountain lions alike, it is an essential aspect of survival. As we begin to understand the importance of connectivity, we can take strides to reconnect isolated spaces. So thank you for watching this series and bringing awareness to this conflict. By connecting and collaborating with others, we all can ensure the survival of California mountain lions.